The 6.5 is on the road in Denver, Colorado at Supercomputing 2023. We are in the Lenovo booth talking about supercomputing. We're talking about flops well, to, to tops. There we go. Flops to tops. We almost got that right here, we but I got to tell you, I'm going to give credit to Daniel, even though it's very hard here, but the amount of technology and the amount of innovation is is incredible here. I think the last supercomputing I went to, Dan, uh, five or six years ago, and it is just bursting from the seams. In fact, it was hard to get in. There were 10,000 people, I think, waiting to either see the great booths everywhere, the drinks, the food, or maybe a combination of all three. I don't know. AI is hot. It is red hot. And uh, the feeling of excitement of energy that's going on around the event is palpable. And so, you know, this, you know, we are kind of nerds, so we can say this in good company, but are this event though? used to be kind of a place for, you know, us. Yeah. And now it feels like AI is kind of cool. So, you know, tell all those athletes to go home. <laughs> you know, the real athletes are here making, you know, world changing technologies. And Pat, I couldn't be more excited to be here. Yeah, by the way, one uh, one infrastructure vendor that has really made a run here and a name for themselves uh, is Lenovo. And it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. And, and the only thing better than talking to Lenovo is talking to Lenovo and one of their customers, because we always say customers are that grand purifier, right? They kind of align analyst with vendor with the customer. So let's see where this goes. Scott, great to see you again. Nice to see you too. Thanks guys for being here with us. Absolutely. Andrew, yeah. welcome to the 6.5. First nice time and okay. hopefully not the last time. I hope so. Thank yes. you. Yes, yeah, Scott, you are an alumnus. You are back. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Let's start out talking a little bit about the vast public sector ecosystem at Lenovo. What's the driving force behind yeah. the investment and why is this part of the business growing so quickly? So, you know, we've been committed to helping our customers solve humanity's greatest challenges for a long time. We've been talking about that a long time, Pat. It's, so, yes, very yeah. consistent. And very consistent. is good. Yeah, it is. Agree. So, where does a lot of that, you know, solving humanity's greatest challenges happen? It happens out in the public sector, at our big HPC sites, at places like Imperial. So, we're committed to try to provide the best possible technology to those users so they can go solve those problems, make our lives better, make our healthcare better, understand the planet, understand the atmosphere, you know, the climate, what's going to happen in five years. So, we're committed to that and partnering with people like Imperial and you know, the rest of our, our customers around the world. We are the number one provider of supercomputers in the top 500. The reason I'm proud of that is not the number of listings, but it means we're putting HPC in the hands of more users than anyone else out there, and that's what we're proud of. So, Andrew, uh, can you talk a little bit about kind of what you do and what Imperial College does, but also talk a little bit about the engagement that you have between uh, with Lenovo? Sure. So I'm Director of Research Computing at Imperial College in London. We are a very STEM heavy university. We have a business school as well, but we primarily focus on the STEM subjects. And we have users across the whole university who are big HPC users who need the services that we provide to underpin their research activities. So in order to do that, it's key that we can provide platforms, systems that are, you know, really cutting edge, taking things forward. Last year, we partnered with Lenovo so that we can go on this journey, not just to providing next generation platforms across all the research areas, right. but also to adopt sustainable technology to do that as well. I love it. So the, the, the best bits are kept inside of the college or do you give access outside uh, to all this supercomputing goodness? So. Primarily, it's just for the university. It's within the college that we, I mean, we do have collaborations. Ac academia by its very nature is collaborative. So we're collaborating with other universities, with industry, and you will have people who will use that. But first and foremost, it's for the university. Yeah, I remember in uh, early 2020, uh, during the really rough period of the, the P word, I don't know if we can say it or YouTube or what'll happen. <laughs> so, but I do remember actually reading a lot of studies. I imagine it was uh, from Imperial. That's right. Uh, yes. You 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 had a very well regarded, respected model that was being shared that was trying to understand the likely impact of what was going to happen. So I remember in parallel your your data, uh, your your computing was behind that, and so it was very interesting to watch how kind of academia supercomputing. And for us, that was really like you said, it was a horrible time, but it was very interesting to see the, what you said about collaboration, tech companies, universities, national laboratories working together so profoundly to basically try to help people understand what was going on. Yeah, absolutely. And our role 
in sort of central research computing is to help people to do their research without having to think about the technology. You know, that as much as we have big central systems, there are lots of other systems within the university as well. And part of this partnership with Lenovo now is to help us build new systems in new data centers using the best water cooling technology so that we can bring other people in the university into using this technology for all that research as well. Let me double down on that. You start talking about Neptune and the technology. Imperial has sustainability ambitions. Lenovo, of course, wants to offer greater levels of sustainability. Talk about sort of the, the process of learning more about the Neptune technology, how it helped you meet your needs. And then maybe you can talk a little yeah. bit about how Neptune is evolving as well more broadly, but, yeah. but with you, Andrew. So we reached a point last year where we were at the limits of what we could do with our existing data center, with our existing systems. So we wanted to work with somebody who could take us on this water cooled journey. Uh, Imperial has an ambition to be net zero by 2040. So, you know, how do we help with that? How do we go on that journey? It's not just that the technology providers are pushing us in this direction because, you know, we can't do things air cooled anymore. We need to do water cooling. Uh, you know, we want to do that so we can get access to the best technology that we need. So it was really about, in order to do that, we need to get all the various pieces in place. We need a data center, we need a water cooling technology, we need to work with a partner who understands what we need to do so that we can have sensible conversations with data center providers so we can put it all together and then build the systems for the next five, 10 years that Imperial needs. Scott, Very cool. yeah, give us a little uh, uh, yeah. broad view here. Can you believe we've been doing water cooling for over 10 years? We shipped our very first one back in 2012. It was 9,700 units of warm water cooled supercomputing. Back when the thought of mixing computing and water was kind of like everybody was freaking out. Absolutely. So <laughs> 10 like years on, streams. I'm telling you, man. Uh, 10 years on, we have got it going all over the world. Love seeing it go into Imperial. Uh, they're one of our newer customers on it. But it's, it's all over the planet. And the reason for it is multifold. One is you need water to unlock these new high-end processors, these new high-end GPUs. The amount of power they consume means there's going to be a lot of heat given off as they do their job. Dealing with that heat's not easy. Liquid cooling it makes it far more easy. Liquid's really good at extracting heat out of the systems. So we're going to save money on our power bill, but as Andy said, it's also going to have a direct sustainability impact because the less power you use, the less CO2 we're going to emit into the environment, the less water we're going to use in the data center because we're not having to chill, we're not going to have to do evaporative cooling. It just keeps on stacking on itself. And that's why, it's again, it's growing everywhere around the globe. Yeah, uh, industry analysts need to be very careful about when they, they say firsts and, and things like that, but uh, Lenovo and before that IBM uh, were clearly first in this technology. And what's funny is everybody's trying to get on the bandwagon. But what I have found is in talking to end customers uh, is that every vendor solutions are, are, are not the same. Yeah. I've heard talks about leaks and quite frankly, you know, leaks and semiconductors and electricity uh, it is not good. And there is a science uh, to water cooling. You can't just check the box uh, and make it happen. And, and I'm, I'm really excited about what, what the future holds and look forward to Lenovo upping their game now that it's right. People are uh, jumping yeah. into this uh, left and right. People want to hear about it. It's beautiful. It's great because more people than ever are asking about liquid. Um, you know, the robustness of the design is one of the things that I think makes us different. The other thing is we're using warm water. That's a real differentiator. No one else yes. is driving that agenda. We don't ever want to have to chill that water and spend the power to chill it. Yes. We also want to recycle the heat that comes out of that system. You got water coming from these systems. It's over 50 degrees Celsius. It's about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. Uh, we can recycle that heat. There's value in that energy. So we're doing that. And we're trying to do 100% heat capture. That's yeah. the other thing that makes us a little bit unique. So really exciting. So Andrew, I wanted to shift gears just, just a, a bit. I mean, for decades, it was always about the most flops, right? And then, then it was, you know, flops per energy. And then this AI thing comes in and it's not necessarily a driver of flops, it's different types. Tops, excuse me. Flops to tops. Flops to tops, yes. <laughs> By the way, all credit goes to Daniel here. I finally uh, figured that out today, I love it. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, like, what do those workloads look like? Like, how are you enabling both high performance computing, classic uh, workloads, let's say governed by flops, uh, and these AI workloads? So it's a very good question. I mean, 
to first order, we have people who are using our traditional HPC systems to do AI, to do some of the work that they want. But increasingly what we're seeing is people want access to more interactive platforms. They want a, a, a different approach to doing the work that they want to do. So we have a big initiative in Imperial called IX. It used to be called Imperial X, it was shortened to just IX. <laughs> and it's all about AI and machine learning. And that community is really helping us to think about what we do in providing services because they want things that are more interactive. They want access to the GPUs, they want access to perhaps other technologies as well, but they want it in a more interactive way. So we're having to rethink how we provide services to perhaps be a little bit more cloud-like on-premise uh, right. to, to do that. That's cool. Is it any, uh, what is your thinking when it comes to maybe GPUs or ASICs or does it even matter uh, at, at this point? So at the moment, a lot of people are wedded to using GPUs because of the, the whole ecosystem around GPUs. Oh, yeah. for, for a while, people have got used to using that technology. So that's the, the kind of safe technology to go to for a lot of people. They kind of feel comfortable knowing how it works. Well, they're very programmable, not yeah. as programmable as a CPU, but more programmable than an ASIC or an FPGA. Exactly. exactly. But increasingly, we do have some areas where people are looking at, you know, what can we do with things like FPGA? So we've got people right now asking us for access to FPGA. Uh, we're looking at things like DPUs as well, how we use those, and we want to bring other things into the ecosystem. But underpinning all this is we need a data center, water cooling, etc., to bring the platforms into to deliver it. Now, I love to hear that you're exploring all those options. Quite frankly, everybody is, mm -hmm. uh, because you know the, the great part of, of ramping up the performance curve is we can do so many other things, but boy, does it take a lot of electricity and a lot of resources and need a lot of availability of these things. And I always like to say, given uh, enough time, uh, most things get sucked into under the main processing unit. I mean, whether it was the floating, floating point unit, yeah. uh, vector instructions, I mean, it's just a matter of time. And that's never to say that GPUs would ever go away. It just says there's gonna be something that's gonna layer on top, mm -hmm. right, to keep uh, delivering this. But I'm really glad uh, to see you're, you're researching it. Um, um, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm, I'm glad to see. Yeah. Sorry, Dan. No, absolutely. Well, look, uh, Scott, you know, as we, as we wrap this up and wind this down, you know, we see some great innovation through this partnership. Love to just get your take, you know, how you see these technologies, whether it's water cool all the way to, you know, the next generation high performance systems. How, are, how do you see this enabling more innovation yeah. across uh, public sector? Yeah, so Dan, we understand the technology at a very deep level. And it's not just the CPU and a GPU, it's all these other things yeah. that Pat talked about. Understanding how to apply those is something we kind of need to partner with with him and his researchers and with our ecosystem. So the work we're doing you know, here, we actually gave it a very cool name because it is cool. We call it Icicle. And it's Imperial College, IC, Intel Corporation, IC, in Lenovo, LE, Icicle. And it just shows it's the power of the ecosystem. It's working with all our partners to, to, put our, to put our knowledge behind what his research is trying to do. We, together we do some pretty amazing things. We want to do that all over the planet. Well, I really appreciate both of you, Andy, Scott. Thanks so much for joining us here on the 6.5. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Nice appreciate it. it. All right, and that's a wrap here at SC23 in Denver, Colorado. Supercomputing is hot. It is back from flops to tops. It's time to say goodbye, but hit that subscribe button. See you all really soon.